Satnam, Amman Devi here, offering a little bit of a discussion and a general card reading will follow. As always, take what resonates and I'll record. I have some cards, they've already given me the card decks for you. Those are all set out, but this morning when I got up, they led me here. <laughs> so here speaking with you a little bit about honoring timelines and honoring the nudge that you have. So whether it's that nudge to kind of curl in and take care of you right now rather than go, 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 or whether it's this nudge to go here to this place or do this thing, sign up for this class, call this person, it's honoring that. That's part of honoring your intuition is rather than blocking that guidance because the analytical mind says XYZ doesn't make sense plan <laughs> and the steps one through ten make sense to me but the divine sees this bigger picture and that brings me back to this idea of honoring timelines and activations on this planet uh, I was seeing the sense of like humans <laughs> in different places and light coming in and that the light kind of brought um, this activation on this on this planet through you so think of your crystal grids that you were doing like on your altar where you might clear your crystals and set them out in certain places and there's this geometric pattern and the energy of those crystals activate and help support your healing and it helps to nurture um, I can read the word motivation. <laughs> okay. I was going to say manifestation, but they're saying motivation. Um, this is motivation for you not to feel deceived when you feel redirected. Uh, so after I had that vision, I had several conversations about delays in... Um, I heard the word finances, um, delays in travel. Um, I'll give myself an example um, and then share a couple of the others. I was dreaming of Sedona, so I'm like, okay, let me, let me go, <laughs> go there. And I had this plan in my mind, on my birthday in April, I, I'm gonna go and just kind of set that aside, set that in my mind, I'm gonna plan and go there. Well, <laughs> other things happen in travel, was taken off, has been taken off the list for the year. Um, and it's because of the divine new. Um, I feel like uh, Divine Scarlet spoke to some travel plans delayed for her because of her guidance. Um, and it's because they knew the bigger picture. But what I am getting is that if you had a plan and now that's changed, or where you want to go, you haven't been placed there on the planet yet, it's because there's more work that needs to be done. Uh, you might have, as a star seed, some, some work, some work to do within yourself to make sure you're at the vibration to meet um, others where you need to be to continue to activate together. That triangle of light is really changing and how I'm seeing it. I am, I've been seeing three people and I think that's more of a bird story. Where, um, when we talk about the twin flame journey or you hear about that, it's like, or manifesting, you have to be in alignment with that. And your energy has to be open to receive. And so you might have some work to do on yourself to align or you might have different activations to do or work with um, before you can get there it's like doing your homework before you can graduate to the next level or um, before that meeting <laughs> you have some action steps for your team to take care of and they're working through you to make this magic happen and so with these activations you're being placed in certain timelines in certain spaces to bring in these energy currents and then it radiates out and if we think about um, I don't know anything about nuclear weapons, but I'm seeing like that 
that mushroom cloud, if we think about how that energy comes down onto the planet and sparks out, your light on the planet sparks out. You're working in a different frequency, a different level of, it's, it's not fight and defeat, it is light and radiate, although it doesn't always feel like that. As a star seed, you've been activated on this planet to awaken others in a way of teaching through your energy and it happens on different timelines and it happens in different waves and ways. And so you might not feel like a lucky charm. You might feel, <laughs> I think one time, I love you mom, she was like, she called me a train wreck <laughs> at the time. Oh yeah, but it sometimes it, our, our paths aren't linear on purpose. It's like you're supposed to go over here and then go there. Think about a bee. It, it goes over here, it, it um, pollinates that flower and then goes here and then goes there and then goes back to the colony and back out again. Um, and it's, it's more of a zigzag pattern. My brother's dog, I call her my niece, when I walk her, she walks in a zigzag pattern. That's how she's programmed. That is part of her, her breed when she's on a leash, she zigzags. Um, whereas others are, are supposed to, and their minds work in a way that perceive that nonlinear path as a stagnation because of the mind's perception of success. Success is not linear. What the foundation of what you're called here to do as a light worker, star seed, is to activate. And again, I, I can't stress that it happens on another level. It's not about the paycheck. It's not about the title. It actually, sometimes you're working in the shadows, actually, you really are. Um, I was grateful to talk this through with Cole the other day because I was like, um, I was working with my speech therapist, and one of the sentences they gave was about a star. I can't remember what the sentence was, but I know it's like, ooh, that is something. That's a starting point to then sit with, talk through, and the a star is lit up in the dark we see it at night but it's uh, and Cole made this point that it's always there even in the daytime but we only see it in the dark and so we're only seen sometimes when we are that catalyst for change when there is that chaos because you through your light energy have brought light to the shadow it, there is one reading I did that s stood out and it was when I was reading the zombie tarot and it was like the light onto that figure created the shadow. So it, the light brought to brings the awareness up, up to the surface. And sometimes when things bubble up to the surface, it doesn't feel good, comfortable. It is a shakeup of the false foundation to rebuild anew a new framework for seeing, believing, and perceiving this new reality. Okay, I didn't expect all that to come out. What I intended to talk about was space, and that as you feel that nudge, if you feel compelled to go to a space, I encourage you to, or you feel like, whoa, that space is not for me, stay back from it. Um, and that space, when I read my cards, I'm like, you might see something in the cards, the pictures, um, the images, or a translation that I don't speak to. It's because this is a nugget for, for you to go. If you feel a nudge to go to one space, um, and I'll give this savage, historic savage mill for me as an example, there is, uh, in the antique shop, I and get very clear information. I get really clear guidance. And I love the little um, antique book section. And it's 
you know, it's just like, oh, today I'll go here. Oh, wow, that book is pulling, pulling from inside to reach. It's not my head thinking, oh, I need to get this book. Um, it's, it's pull, it's like body pulled into it. And it's not of start from page one and go to the end. It's uh, open the book. Wow, I'm on page 22. Does the number 22 mean anything to me? If I want to, I could research, excuse me, tw 22. Um, and then go from there. Or is there something on that page that calls out that ends up taking you down this this illumination, I won't say rabbit hole as in a sinking ship, it's more of like this investigation to evoke a memory, um, to confirm your um, knowledge that's innate within you. It's, you know, when I was thinking about cards or charms, it forms of divination, it's, it's forms of communicating. As humans, we can communicate non-verbally, we can communicate through touch, um, we can communicate through our words, we can write, we can type, right? Um, now we have so many platforms to hit each other up with. Um, and so how are you communicating with humans, but how is the divine getting through to you? And sometimes a space and place is one way that they can communicate with you. And through t that time and space, you're also helping healing, transmuting energies in that space. They could be delivering and activating through you in that space here on this planet, but also you could be raising the frequency and not to be, not to overlook that grid that you might not understand why you were led to one place in this timeline. And subconsciously there could be other people aligned and all of a sudden your soul tribe um, your starseed family <laughs> is working through all of you creating this grid on earth to elevate the vibrational frequency. Um, you can research vortexes, but what I have found other than my dreams with Sedona, there are certain places that I'm drawn to um, that elevate me. Old Rag is one of them is I used to think, I was like, I think it's my ego <laughs> that's got me all like fired up after this hike, after, you know, climbing up these um, boulders, rocks, or walking. Um, but no, it's like, you know, plugging into an outlet. My body is buzzing after that. It's, it's the same thing of when there's certain um, sound vibrations. Uh, working with sound currents. Other places, I, I know Divine Scarlet and I talked about Salem and how it's just like, wow, I couldn't believe it. And on some level, it felt like the, the tourism there just kind of took, I think, all of us back of the meaning and why, why the memorial is there and why we go there. And now I kind of have this other perception that we could be drawn to that place to elevate the energy. Um, and again, there might be places you want to stay away from. Um, Point Lookout, there's this fort there, and I'm like, whoa, I am not going in that building. Like, gross. And that was before I even, like, kind of knew or had words for for this. Um, okay, Moss. You are entitled to receive, and sometimes we're asking you to believe in us. And so sometimes, and I think it's happening a little bit more rapidly now, what once was confusing to you is becoming clear. And what seemed like mystic mysticism, your distant memories are being awakened in certain places and it's a memory of who you are and now you're being asked to sit at the table. And so sometimes those energy grids that were here on this physical planet, your higher self in the astral realm is sitting at the table with your soul council or your starred seed family. So again, you're working on different waves and frequencies and stepping up to a higher order of divine guidance and intelligence. 
as you awaken, you're going to pull back from the physical world in the social subset and spend more time behind the curtain, which is your true reality, seeing the two of pentacles. So you're constantly flowing between two worlds. And I've, I've recommended this book before, The Holographic Universe, and I believe there are others, and I think you're becoming more consciously aware of it, and it's coming to the forefront. And these elevations are requiring you to take better care of yourself. I know I need to do that. Um, Given the word, um, lighten, enlighten, light codes. Think of yourself as that, okay. Think of yourself as that crystal on, on that altar. And that's why you're care, like it's, it's constantly cleansing yourself. Um, if you're not sure how to cleanse crystals, look, look that, look that up because specific crystals, uh, require different things or if, you know, you, you don't want, yeah, look that, look that one up. But just like you might require different things, you might require that salt bath, you might require the sage, you might require a vacation, a nap, a certain food. Um, so now I feel like we're getting a little bit more into ascension. Or um, So really just honoring how your guides are teaching you to take care of you and trusting the higher order of things. And your vibration is now resonating with a different planetary alignment and different humans that are seemingly non-human, we are. Um, and you might be called to step into new places or you might look back and see, oh, that's why XYZ did and didn't work out. Oh, I was just here to do XYZ. And it, it's like this non-rational way of healing on this planet, this um, non-linear way of being and stepping up to the plate, so to speak, to let the light in and it happens through you. I'm looking at the, the light that's coming through the window on the carpet. Yeah. So maybe some level of transparency or light and shadow creating that balance through you. Fire alarm is staying up. So you could be that alarm call. You could be the one, again, that catalyst for change um, that then brings in divine order and you might step away while like it's like more like you could be that first responder. You could be that one that makes the 911 call, um, saying that those prayers have put systems into place and everything is divinely orchestrated. Um, and perhaps now, again, this, the seats at the, this one table are really standing up. It's a different seat now than what was stepping up before. Um, perhaps there are now you are aligning to new partnerships. Um, a new family system, a new way, um, and to believe in yourself at that seat. Well, I do hope this served well. Keep an eye out. Like I said, I have, I have decks out um, for a general reading, um, and I, I assume that's where I'll be going to, uh, working on today, maybe a little bit later, but they led me here. Um, I do hope this served well, and um, please continue to listen to your own needs, uh, listen to your inner guidance over anything anyone else has to say, especially a human. <laughs> listen to the higher ups, listen to your guides, your ancestors, and, and your masters over our, our humans with our egos getting in the way. Sending lots of love.